You got to move the ball when you're open. You got to step in and shoot it with confidence. Houston comes in, winners of 11 of their last 12. OU has lost three of their last four. They're in their home whites. It's Houston in the road blacks. And the Cougs control the opening tip. Your officials, Keith Kimball, Kelly Self, and Tyler Cup. The Sooners crowd on their feet until their team makes the first bucket, but it's Juwan Roberts with the first bucket of the game. That is seven straight games that Houston has started the game with a post entry to Juwan Roberts. That is the first play in seven straight games. Sam Godwin gets things off to a rousing start for the Sooners. And that's the aggression you're going to need, and especially on the interior. Nice to get Sam Godwin right down the lane and a big-time dunk to start. Here's LJ Cryer. Inside, Javier Francis. Again, concerted effort to get in the paint. Well, Calvin Sampson returning to a place that he called home for a dozen years, Chris, as you alluded to earlier. is number four all-time in active wins. And it was interesting. We both commented he has a Zoom conference call the week leading up to games, and he got emotional in that conference call. He's not shying away from that emotion that brings with coming back here. And he shouldn't. You know, again, he raised his family here. He was a young coach when he began here at Oklahoma. And he was saying to us, he didn't want, you know, it was going to be all about him, and he didn't want it to be all about him because he's bringing back four Oklahoma grads who are part of his staff, one of whom is his son, Kellen. The others, Hollis Price, Quantus White, and his daughter, Lauren, is the director of basketball operations for Houston. Here's Milos Yuzan, 12 in white. J.V. McCollum, top scorer for the Sooners. Here's Jalen Moore on the wing for three. That's the open three you're going to have to hit. And that is the shot that Porter Moser went over today. On that roll off of that high screen, Houston's coming over with the tag defender. That shot is going to be open. You've got to hit it to pull an upset. Here's Roberts, left hand. Good. He's two for two. Juwan Roberts has gotten so comfortable playing with his back to the basket, especially if he can get to that left hand. Roberts retreats. Moore goes to work in the paint. Blocked by Roberts. Porter Moser in his third season in Norman looking to take his Sooners to the NCAA tournament for the first time in his time here in Norman, Oklahoma. Knows Kelvin Sampson very well. They were both Sweet 16 coaches yeah. in the same tournament in 2021. Yeah, known each other a long time. They're both good men. You know, Porter Moser today really getting with his team. Ball toughness, he was calling it. You've got to be strong with the basketball. We cannot turn it over today. He knows just like everyone else does. Houston brings the fight to you. McCollum, short on the jumper. And here comes Jamal Shedd, front runner for Big 12 Player of the Year, number one in black. Ooh, picked off. And McCollum fouled by Shedd. Well, McCollum fell down. That's why Sharp was open for a beat, but a nice job getting back to his feet. And it's going to be hard to make a pass like that across court, especially with the energy in this building to start. Milos Yuzan, tremendous assist-to-turnover ratio in Big 12 play. They're going to need to take care of that basketball today. And another whistle. That one's going to go on 21 in black, Emmanuel Sharp. What makes Houston's defense as good as they are? They're very aggressive, and, and they are so good when you get into scramble situations. They're very good at helping recover. They are all very good on the ball. Godwin swallowed up by that Houston defense. Not once, but twice. 
I think the key to Houston's defense are the two guys in the interior, Juwan Roberts and Javier Francis. It's not a tall front line, but they are really long. Like, Francis has a 7'5 wingspan. Juwan Roberts, really long. Those guys are both good talkers. They're excellent in ball screens, and they never relent. I mean, they play with such effort. Godwin, a 63% free throw shooter, hits the first. And you were telling me earlier, you feel like J.B. or Francis, one of the better defenders overall in the Big 12. He's an exceptional defender. He absolutely, absolutely should be in consideration for, for that award. He's so alert, so aware. Again, he's outstanding at pick and rolls. Good start for Sam Godwin, though. A little strength up front so far from Oklahoma. Godwin had four in their most recent loss at Iowa State. He's got four already tonight. Roberts, and he's three for three. Just taking his time, and it's single coverage. And Godwin, have yourself the first few minutes. He beats everybody down the floor, and that was another big point of emphasis for Porter Moser. Transition, not having to play against that half-court defense. Away nearly picked it off. Sharp for three. Got it. First three of the game for Emmanuel Sharp. Inside, Godwin again. And he's fouled before the shot. Dan Houston sends two defenders to the ball screen. Kelvin Sampson doesn't call it trapping, although I think most of us would call it that. He calls it getting to the line to scrimmage. But nonetheless, they are sending two to the ball. That ball handler's got to reverse it quickly. Get it out of there. And then immediately, Oklahoma hits the roller. And again, what an impact Sam Godwin has made early. Oklahoma playing without John Hughley, so you don't have that depth up front. Not only is Oklahoma shorthanded, Houston comes in yeah. shorthanded as well. Their freshman big man, JoJo Tugler, is on the bench today, and we're already hearing rumors that it might be an extended stay away from the team. Picked off by Roberts. Up ahead, here's Shed. Oh, and the foul's going to be called on Latre Darthur. Yeah, you mentioned the, the loss of Tugler, which is a big one. It's, you know, I was talking to Kellen Sampson before the game. You know, Houston puts their five on the ball on under out of bounds. Again, really hard throwing over that length and then a great defensive play by Jawan Roberts. But remember, Houston lost Terrence Arsenault right at the beginning of the season. They just lost Ramon Walker Jr. And now you lose Tugler. I mean, that's three dudes that Houston is playing without. There's Tugler in the middle, the big man, freshman, just 19 years old, but really providing quality minutes and rebounding, which is a calling card for Kelvin Sampson. What can you say about Jamal Shedd that hasn't already been said? One of the best players in the country. 16 a game at Big 12 play. He's got his first two tonight. Number one Houston in their first road game as the top-ranked team in the country. Otega Owe off the mark. And the rebound to Roberts. LJ Cryer. Nice look inside. Patience again pays off. They love that early drag for either Cryer or Shed, and both of them are so good coming off of that and reading the defense. Like you said, Rich, really good patience to let Jawan Roberts fill the lane and get to the front of the rim. Here's Rivaldo Suarez, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. And we have our first time out of the game, a close contest in the first five minutes. Number one, Houston. Up home with the field artillery. Shout out to my F.A. brothers and sisters out there. And I met him at an event down uh, at Fort Sill, and he, he invited me and, and some soldiers to come up and watch them play. So I got to see the great teams he had in 02, 03, and 04. 
And I thought it was really cool when Kelvin left Oklahoma and Jeff Capel took over. Kellen Sampson stayed and played a year for Jeff Capel. And I thought it was really cool from both of them. It said a lot about both men, Kellen to stay and play for a different guy, and Jeff Capel inviting Kellen to stay on the team. And they developed a really good relationship. Just a lot of, a lot of good history here between the Sampsons and Oklahoma. And Kellen now, the head coach in waiting. Once Dad retires, it's Kellen's Cougar program to run. Next to him on the left, Qantas White. And next to him is Hollis Price, who was the player of the year in the Big 12 when they went to the Final Four. That one off the mark. Oklahoma could tie it or take a lead with a three. I believe that was the first miss from the field for the Cougs. Oh, it's an off an offensive rebound, just a layup. Yeah, you get lucky a little bit if you're Oklahoma. Here's Luke Northweather. Are you kidding me? The threes are falling early. That's good news for OU. He is playing a lot more with Hughley out. Played 23 minutes in their last game, a season high, and that's what he gives them, a pick and pop. Iowa State ended up having to switch one through five because of his ability to shoot it. Just his seventh three of the year. But it's a big one. It gives OU the lead. And Roberts right back to work. Houston plays two bigs up front. And so what that means is, you know, how are you going to match? You're going to put your Northweather on Lath. That means you've got a smaller player on Roberts. And as athletic as Owe is, he's too small. And when he gets it over that right shoulder, he's tough. And then again, if you're going to send two to the ball screen, that pick and pop becomes a real weapon. And that's what Luke Northweather gives them. He is a three-point big. Oh, Juwan Roberts. Five for five from the field already, looking for point number 11. But he misses the free throw and the rebound to Moore. In the corner, Moore. And it's rebounded by Francis. Got to go glass or got to go to dunk that. Can't miss layups in a game like this. Now Damian Dunn, the Temple transfer, 11 and black on the floor. Starter's going to be playing a lot of minutes for the Cougars tonight. Seven on the shot clock. Shed left alone. And he gets it to go. Javian McCollum just ran away from Jamal Shedd. He's the league's player of the year, and he had the ball. Here's Moore in the corner. Another three. Three for it, three from three for Oklahoma. It's that corner three. It is that skip pass that is open. Here's Pryor. Roberts left hand. No. First miss of the game for number 13. Here's an open look. Darthur. No. Northweather fought for it, but lost that battle. You can't leave Jamal Shed under any circumstances. There's the stunt to plug. He thought Yuzan had him. Yuzan was going to go back to his guy. And then here's this skip to the corner. That's the play that's open because on that roll off of the ball screen, the tag defender, who's the defender there to plug on the roll, he's coming over. That skip is open. Roberts left Man. hand. Money off the window. He is going to work. Going to have to figure something out with him. And it's been so easy for him to catch it in there. His season high is 20. He's got a dozen already. OU already six assists tonight. But they lost the ball there. Francis took it away.
Nice feed. Roberts again. Number one, Houston. Coming to Norman, which was the home of their head coach, Kelvin Sampson, for 12 years. And Moore stepped on the line. That's an OU turnover. Jawan Roberts is cooking. He's best. And he's going to be asked to play the majority of the 40 minutes tonight. He definitely is, especially if he keeps playing this well. But that's where, again, you said it a moment ago, no Joseph Tugler. That is a big loss for Houston. Here's LJ Cryer. They like to look for him for three out of timeouts, but he lost it. McCollum step back three. That's the fourth triple of the night for the Sooners. JV McCollum can score, has not shot a good percentage. Takes a lot of shots off the dribble, but he is a tough shot maker. Good pull up there in transition. Hit that game winner in the Bedlam series against Oklahoma State last week. Houston with the ball, up one. Here's Damian Dunn, three on the shot clock. Cryer's going to have to get it up. And the floater goes for L.J. Cryer. Well, they ran at Juwan Roberts when he called it. Rivado Suarez went down there to double, but then you're caught in rotation. Now Malik Wilson on the floor for nice the Cougars. Pass. Suarez for two. Nice job by Suarez, ducking in, getting a seal there, and a really nice pass. And so far, your recipe for an upset, Oklahoma's doing a really good job in all the categories. Pryor, short. And here come the Sooners. They want to run. Godwin. And he gets fouled on the way up. Sam Godwin playing passer here. Nice job in the double came over by Suarez to create that seal on Jerron Roberts. And they have really moved the ball. You know, like you said, Rich, we the ball's got to move. It's had some life here. Now Godwin at the line. He's got six. Make it seven. Our final Super Tuesday doubleheader of the season starts with number 14, Alabama, on the road, taking on number 24, Florida, at 7 Eastern. Then it's seventh-ranked Kansas looking for revenge at home against K-State. Both games on ESPN and the app. Alabama's losing to Tennessee right now in Knoxville. And how about the Kansas Jayhawks? Seven losses in league play. It's a big second foul on Javier Francis this early. We've already had five ties and five lead changes in this one. And Damian Dunn knocks down a triple. They got to get him going. His minutes are down over their last five games. McCollum thought about it from the top of the key. Ten on the shot clock. Yuzan working on the big man. Skip pass again. Suarez, great shot fake. And he gets it to go. Five different Sooners have hit one three-pointer or more. Ooh. Stolen away nearly by Yuzan. Now the Cougs have to get one up, and yes. Shedd does. He is the silencer. Jamal Shedd is nails. Broken play. He says, I got this. Oh, 
you. Five for six from three. Missed that shot. You could get a better look than that. They've gotten open threes. Those are the threes you want to take. Otherwise, keep the pressure on Houston's defense. Number one, Cougs up one. Eight minutes to go in the first half. Done. Off the mark, and it's one and done for the Cougars. Here's Yuzan surveying. Ten on the shot clock. Now more from the wing. Looked good off his hand. And Calvin Sampson wants to slow things down. Shed. Up ahead. Great look. Yuzan and Moore oh. can't finish on two attempts. That one swatted out of bounds. It'll be Oklahoma ball, but a couple of golden opportunities. Oh, wow. Golden. <laughs> no question. But how about this back and forth? Revolvo Sore. 45 points. They weren't confident. They didn't step in to shoot them. And it's been a much different composure today from that line, and that's a big reason why it's a one-point game. They've taken care of it, the ball has moved, and they've knocked down some shots. Chef Spatola gave us the recipe, <laughs> and Oklahoma's following that recipe. Yet, they're down one. Here's Ortega away. They'd love to get some offense from him. Time running out on the shot clock, a force three, and Cedric Laff who's been forced into some burn time on the floor. That foul's going to go on Northweather. Well, he's going to be asked to do a lot here, Cedric Lath, with Javier Francis on the bench with two fouls. He'll be curious to see if Kelvin Sampson brings him back. But a really good rebound there by Lath. Cedric Lath, number two in black, a 6'9 freshman from the Ivory Coast. A lot of upside for him, but forced into playing time now with that injury to JoJo Tugler. Five to shoot. Coog's got to go. Step back three. Shed way off the mark, and it's tracked down by Soares. Here's Darthur. Got it! The ninth lead change of the night already. And what a great decision by J.D. McCollum. As soon as Damian Dunn came over to help, to plug, he just kicked that ball out, and it led to that open three, and again, knocking down an open shot. The fifth different sooner with a triple. OU up two on number one Houston. Another late shot clock situation for the Cougs. And the foul, no foul call, but the bucket good from L.J. Cryer. Started to really drive the ball well, Rich. L.J. Cryer, you know, his three-point shooting percentage has gone up, and I think in part because of his willingness to put it on the floor. He's so crafty in the paint. Coming up on five minutes to go, no whistle. All way off the window. Everything you want from the Big 12 game so far. That three is good and silences the crowd. Coming in, Damian Dunn had not hit a three in six games. Again, just really has been in a funk. The transfer from Temple. He is an X-Factor, though. They could really use his scoring. Robertson Francis set to check in on the whistle. 
And we've got that whistle. 4.08 to go and a foul on the floor. He just kicked to Damian Dunn. Nice skip over the top. And then Otega away. I mean, that's got to be something. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a dislodgement there. It's either an offensive foul or a block. But regardless, a good finish through the through the contact. And you see, I was going to praise the ref saying, hey, they're letting them play. Well, you can make the case that Rivaldo Soares, they call him Waldo, has been Oklahoma's best player the last month, averaging 13 and a half per game in his last five. He has eight tonight and now nine. You would think if the officials are going to let this game be as physical as they have so far, it would be advantage Houston. But right now, Oklahoma with a two-point lead. And Francis back on the floor with the two fouls. Roberts back on as well. He leads all scores with 14, and he's got the ball in his hands. Cryer. Around and out. Here's Uzan. Left alone. Owe. And it'll be Houston basketball. Our final media timeout of the first half, and it's been an entertaining one to say the least. Number one Houston, down one to Oklahoma. They'll be experiencing some atmosphere in a couple of weeks in Kansas City when these two teams will head to the Big 12 tournament. But here in Norman, Houston is playing like Houston does. Oklahoma's playing some of their best ball of the season, and yet they're only up one. Yeah, well, and that's Houston's number one in the country. You know, they're, they're really good, and, and their offense has actually shown up in this first half as well. Man. He is balling. L.J. Cryer is balling over the last five games. Came into this game 15 made threes in his last four games. He's already hit two tonight. It's the best he's played all year. And back and forth we continue to go. How about 13 lead changes in the first 17 minutes of the game? And there's Roberts again. They are so good playing behind the defense, especially when the other big has the ball and is approaching the basket. You know, there J.B. Francis attacks, and Jawan Roberts does a nice job playing behind the defense to scoop up the offensive board. OU looking for a signature win this year to bolster their NCAA tournament resume. More and one. What a drive. Okay, he gets Juwan Roberts on him, immediately drives the big, and then Javier Francis with the two fouls. You got to beg out of that because you cannot get that foul back. You can get that layup back. That's a bad foul by Francis and a great attack by Moore. And now Roberts is down. He wasn't whistled for the foul. It was Javier Francis, but Jawan Roberts is being attended to by athletic trainer John Houston on the bench. Jalen Moore has had such a great year. He, he's Oklahoma's leading rebounder. He's their leading shot blocker. And he completes the three-point play. He has nine, and the OU lead is two. To your point, Chris, Jalen Moore averaging 11 and 7 in Big 12 play. And we're going the other way. It's a great play by Darthard. Uncharacteristic from Jamal Shedd. 
now they're down another big man, Juwan Roberts. It's not good. They are the walking wounded right now. So Francis with three fouls, Roberts in the locker room, and JoJo Tugler out with a foot injury. And with all that, Houston can take the lead with the three. Here's Malik Wilson. His minutes have been up lately, and he's earning that playing time. Eighth tie of the ball game. That one knocked out of bounds. And Jamal Shedd took one in the kisser. Incidental. Let's not go to the monitor, please. A minute 31 to go in the half. The officials could have, chose not to. Luke Northweather checks in for Porter Moser as Sam Godwin goes to the bench. Softies need not apply for a game like tonight. Now C.J. McCollum, their leading scorer, held to three points. But everybody chipping in for OU on the offensive end. Got to get it up. Darther did, but off the back iron and the rebound to Cedric Lapp. Shed, takeover time. And he'll go to the line and shoot two. You know, we use the word process a lot, you know, trust the process, follow the process. Jamal Shedd is the living definition of process. It was interesting. He, he, was, he was a little tough to handle coming out of high school. You know, he's one of those players who, who needed Kelvin Sampson a lot more than Kelvin Sampson needed him. I was talking to Kelvin about Jamal. He said, you know, a weaker coach, somebody who's not as demanding as me, Jamal would have taken advantage of that. And obviously, we know the story he's had to play behind some guys. He's been to a Final Four. He has earned what he has gotten this year. What a leader. What a player. Only player in college hoops in the top 20 in the nation in assists, steals, and assist to turnover ratio. He's got eight in the first half, and you get the sense like Kelvin Sampson's going to be leaning even more on his team leader as we go to break with 101. So he hasn't shot it well, but he has 21 assists. He has 50 assists and only 11 turnovers in their last seven games. He just he does whatever is needed for his team. He's played 37 plus minutes in six of their last eight, and you get the feeling like Seven of the last nine is happening after this one's all said and done. Yuzan. Nice right hand from Milos Yuzan for his first two. He's got a little positional size. Went right up over the top at 6'4". Right up over the top of the 6'1 Jamal Shedd. About an eight-second differential between shot clock and game clock. And Shedd goes right at Rivaldo Soros and gets the foul. Milo Suzanne, only a sophomore, playing against one of the best defenders nationally. And again, that positional size, at some point he's going to be a pro. Just really skilled. Got a lot of burn last year as a freshman. So Shed at the line. He's 4 for 4 from the strike tonight. Make it 5 for 5. Tomorrow's NBA Sunday Showcase doubleheader features Luka and the Mavs hosting the Sixers, followed by Steph and the Warriors battling Jason Tatum and the Celtics. Coverage begins 12.30 Eastern on ABC and NBA Countdown.
but he healed, and the Sixers will be featured in that one. Shed two for two. So Jamal has 10. And with, it, with how well Oklahoma has played, and with Francis with three fouls, Roberts in the locker room, what a half for Houston to be up to here on the road in this environment. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds to go in the half. Last shot time for the Sooners. Four to shoot. And a foul called on Jamal Shedd. Silly. It's a bad play from Shedd. I mean, three seconds left and the ball, they weren't even advancing it. I mean, just a really bad giveaway there from Jamal Shedd to be also his second foul. And that sends one of the best free throw shooters in the nation to the line. Javian McCollum has now made 36 consecutive free throws. He's one away from the Oklahoma program record. And if he makes this one, we have our 10th tie of the ball game. Money. 37 straight for McCollum. Ties the game at 45 with three seconds left. Cougs have time to get one up. Cryer. Three oh. off the window. And they never started the clock. Oh, gosh. And Kelvin Sampson has full to play in the second half. This game, obviously, Chris, in stark contrast to Oklahoma's last game Wednesday night in Ames. They scored 45 points total against the Cyclones. They got that same amount in the first half against the nation's best defense. I think early here, you got to put pressure on Javier Francis with the three fouls. Picking up a fourth on him would be big early in this second half. Damian Dunn, number 11 for Houston, starting in place of Roberts. And there's Francis with a block. So long at the rim. He was in a deep drop, just kept backing up to not pick up that foul. And they go right into the painted area, just like they started the game. And they draw a foul on Sam Godwin. Francis only 6'8", but he's got a 7'5 wingspan. Plays a lot taller than he is. Really good timing on that, and a nice job backing up to make that play in the front of the rim. Shed triggers the inbounds. They get it to Cryer, and that is money. He was also huge in that first half. Hyper-efficient, played under control. Coming off a 22-point effort in their win against Cincinnati last week. Cryer with 12, and it's a five-point Houston lead. Five on the shot clock for the Sooners. McCollum's going to have to go. Three ball falls off. Oh, and man, a foul big. on the floor, and that's going to be number four on Javier Francis. So you, Sam Godwin's done a lot in this game, a lot of hustle stuff. That's not going to show up in a stat sheet, but that fourth foul will. And that's the other way you can put pressure on a guy with fouls. It's not just, you know, driving him or posting him up. If you fight for that offensive rebound, force him to keep you off it. So now Francis to the bench. Cedric Lathon. Yuzan, no. Godwin got the offensive rebound, and that's one of his specialties, and he draws another foul on the Cougars. You know, it's Godwin's physicality that has been a difference maker for Oklahoma in this game. He's he scored early, but he's been relentless with his effort. Five-point lead, the largest of the game for either team. And an offensive foul this time called on Oklahoma. That's on JV and McCollum, his first. Or check that, it's on Jalen Moore, his second. Now this is where we talked about Oklahoma's offense. Houston shooting 68%. Now I, I think people are too critical of Houston's offense, but they certainly are not that good. At some point, Oklahoma's going to have to get some stops. Blocked by Soros. Saved out of bounds. And here comes OU. 
And they want to push. Godwin at the other end. Here's Cryer. Oh, he's feeling it. Silencer. Sores tries to answer too strong, and Shed comes away with it. Look out. He's on a heater, folks. for L.J. Cryer, and Porter Moser wants to talk it over. L.J. Cryer is balling, and he has been balling, playing his best basketball of six games. Jamal Shedd can score. Emmanuel Sharp is, is averaging 16 a game in their last four, and we've seen Jerron Roberts do it. The other thing you have to understand about the NCAA tournament is those games slow to a crawl. I mean, the majority of those games are played in the 60s. And with their defense, what it is, good shot out of the timeout by Godwin. With what Houston's defense is, and if you're not used to it, they will score off of their defense in the NCAA tournament. So I think the criticism of their offense is overstated. Especially when you have a flamethrower like Cryer. Here's Shed for three. Short on that. Rebound to Godwin. Yuzan. Good response out of the timeout by Oklahoma. Here's Cryer. Man. Look out. How does that happen? How does that happen? That's his fifth three of the night. McCollum goes down, no whistle. Here's Cryer again. Mm. You're shocked when it doesn't go down for LJ Cryer. <laughs> Well, there needs to be an awareness, obviously, and just a miscommunication. And once again, those two guys confused on a switch. That's easy. A guy has four threes. He is the priority. We both should be going to him as opposed to the opposite. Just a mistake, and then McCollum turns it over on the other end here. Getting a little bit of sloppy after they had responded out of the timeout. And now Juwan Roberts makes his first appearance of the second half with that heavily bandaged right hand. Another wild three by Soares. Sharp to the hole, no good. Here's Yuzan, one-on-one, -on -one. and a foul called on Jamal Shedd, and that's number three on the Houston Star. L.J. Cryer. Houston overall three for five from three in the second half. You compare that to 0 for four for OU in the second half, and it's pretty clear why Houston's built their lead up to eight with 15.37 to go. Alongside Chris Patola, Rich Hollenberg, number one Houston in their first road test as the number one team in the country. And so far, they have passed that test. It's a killer out of a timeout to have a turnover like that. And Jamal Shedd looks like he's limping a little bit. Here's Roberts. Working against Godwin. Eight on the shot clock. Shed hangs, doesn't hit. Damian Dunn got it back. It's blocked, but it's going to be Houston basketball. And you see Kellen Sampson, the associate head coach, 
talking to Jamal Shedd, it looked like he was a little gimpy. But he's a warrior and stays on. 1.4 on the shot clock for the Cougs. And that foul is going to be called on Latre Darthard before the shot clock even started. It's an important next four minutes here for Oklahoma. They got to gather themselves, especially on the offensive end. Here's Cryer. Five to shoot. Done. Step back. Three. Short. And the Sooners want to push. Away. Sloppy pass. Picked off in the middle. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay Houston basketball. Oklahoma only had three turnovers in the first half. They already have three in this second half, and it's been really sloppy. You know, they worked. It is a 40-minute proposition against this Houston defense. They were very diligent about working. And they're getting a little sloppy on the offensive end, and it's now having an impact defensively. Damian Dunn with eight. Largest lead of the night for the number one Cougs. Kelvin Sampson's return to Norman for the first time in 18 years. Took this Oklahoma program to the heights of basketball back in 2002 when they reached the Final Four. Here's Godwin. Strong take. Lost the handle. And Cryer. Shed. Blocked by Moore. And now Shed left alone. No good on the three. Offensive rebound and the putback by Malik Wilson. And another timeout called by the Oklahoma Sooners, who are on the ropes, down a dump. And yet here is Houston on the road in this environment, up 12. Houston looking for their fifth road win in Big 12 play. Out of the timeout. Yuzan off the mark, and it's a one-armed rebound by Jawan Roberts. The good arm. Pryor pulls up. And Wilson gets a fresh 20 for the Cougs. That shot off the mark by Sharp. Jalen Moore, strong take, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Another offensive rebound on the other end that Houston didn't convert, and a nice job by Jalen Moore pushing. If you're Oklahoma, you got to try to get something out of transition. You know, try to get some easy stuff here, and you, you do that with your defense by forcing them to miss. You love when Jalen Moore plays athletically. Moore, one of many bright spots in the first half for Oklahoma. He had nine points. And now Porter Moser taking this stoppage of play to call his starting backcourt over and give him a pep talk. They had to switch the ball out because the ball that they were using was flat. Is that a metaphor for something? <laughs> Jalen Moore, 75% from the free throw stripe this year. Transfer from Georgia Tech misses the first. Our final Super Tuesday doubleheader of the season starts with number 14, Alabama on the road, taking on number 24, Florida at 7 Eastern. Then it's seventh-ranked Kansas looking for revenge at home against Kansas State in the Sunflower Showdown. Both games on ESPN and the app. That free throw by Moore ends a four-minute Oklahoma drought. Here's Cryer, four and black. He's been the star of the second half. 
Wilson. It's too easy. Again, this Oklahoma defense, you want to get back in this game, you're going to have to get some stops. And it start, starts with guarding the ball. McCollum. A three over Juwan Roberts, no good. It's not a good shot. It's not working this defense to get a clean look like they had in the first half. These first eight minutes of the second half dominated by the top-ranked Houston Cougars. Roberts, left hand. That's what he did all first half, too, Chris. Now Roberts, two off his season high. He's got 18 tonight. Darthard for three. Twelve road win, and they will clinch at least a share of the Big 12 title if they can win their next game after this. Their magic number for that will be one if they can hold on tonight. Shot foul on the floor. You know, also like to remind people about Houston, Rich. They're 25 and 3. They have three losses on the season. Two of them were one possession losses. You you called both of them. The one at Iowa State, Momchilovich hits a last second shot. The other was a backdoor cut at TCU. Now, they got smacked by Kansas. That was a loss. But, I mean, they, you know, the other two were on the road, one possession losses. And it's just fascinating to think at the beginning of this season, Calvin Sampson was quoted as saying, there's no more 17-1 and one in conference play anymore. It's pretty darn close to that. Ooh. Jamal Shedd with the shot clock running down. And he's limping bad. He's on one foot. Jawan Roberts has one hand. Well, it's the two H's when the calendar flips to March, Chris. Who's hottest and who's healthiest? And right now, there's no one hotter than the Houston Cougars, but health has become an issue. Soares for three. Needed that. And at some point, their defense, Oklahoma's defense, is going to have to string some stops together. Still a lot of basketball to be played here inside the Lloyd Noble Center. Sharp got the three. He's a real X factor for them. He is streaky, but when when he's streaky hot, he can be really good. Averaging 15 a game, his last six. McCollum steps back for three. Double pass, Wilson, and he'll go to the line. There's this move by Shed. You'll see the, the bank shot, really tough shot off the glass. My goodness. And then here he is limping back up the floor. Something tells me you'd have to drag him off the right. court if he's going to come out. So Malik Wilson at the line. He has six. He's played 18 or more minutes in five of the last six games for Kelvin Sampson. The transfer from Texas Tech providing some quality time. Now eight for Wilson. And that extends the Houston lead. Torres. 
He's playing so well for them. You know, he and Jalen Moore are as athletic a duo as there is in this league. Ten to shoot. Cryer. And Godwin comes away with it. Sooners need to string together a couple of hoops. Column with the blow by. No basket of foul on the floor. In the NBA, that's that's a good bucket. That's a continuation here, Net. Oh, got him. Yeah, I, I'd love to see that be a bucket in college. Nevertheless, the fourth foul on Jamal Shedd. You bail out the defense there on a play like that. So Shedd, your starting point guard, possible player of the year, on the bench with four fouls. Javier Francis, one of the best defensive big men in the league, on the bench with four fouls. Houston, an 11-point lead. And now John Houston, the Houston trainer, is tending to their superstar. Well, if Oklahoma's going to make a run, Chris, it's got to be now. Yep. Here's the lob to Godwin. Yeah, it's got to be now, especially with the... Obviously, with the personnel Houston has out there, and this is their small lineup. Normally, they play the two bigs. This is their small lineup. Roberts, not this time. McCollum. In the corner, shot fake, and the payoff. OU's not done just yet. 74-68, they've made six straight field goals, Chris. A season in his honor, in his memory. And Calvin Sampson knows this game is far from over. Oklahoma on a 7-0 run to get back in it. Pryor goes down and he's hurt. And they got tripped up on Latre Darthur. Javier Francis back in the game with the four fouls. With Oklahoma's momentum, Kelvin Sampson making the move. Off the inbounds. And Moore grabs the rebound. McCollum left alone. And the boom squad was ready to go bonkers. Ryer. Wow, what a bucket. Tough. And you love the aggression. As well as he has shot it from three, putting his head down, driving it, forcing the issue. Came to Houston because he wanted to be known as more than just a three-point shooter. He's putting that on display tonight. Wow, a zone from Houston. Five to shoot. Moore does and connects. It's like seeing a Sasquatch. You don't see the zone from Houston very much. Nice job by Oklahoma adjusting and attacking. Jalen Moore is one rebound shy of a double-double. Cryer. Had the airspace, couldn't knock five. it down. That's five. And that might be on number five. It is, and the night is done for Javier Francis.
It's a foul he cannot commit. And he's had two of those. Inexcusable fouls when you are in foul trouble. I mean, that is just... But they are so schooled to go after the offensive rebound. I mean, it's it's so instinctual for those guys. It's hard to put a regulator on them with foul trouble. But it's not a smart play. So Oklahoma with 6.04 to go is in the bonus. And Rivaldo Suarez will shoot the one and one. OU now 12 for 13 from the strike tonight. And that's big. Like, they, that was the other area, Rich. They had to have an advantage was at the foul line. They've gotten there, and they have knocked them down. I mean, everything you would think Oklahoma needs to pull off the upset is happening. They've made 11 threes. Their season high is 13. And they have a puncher's chance, down just five. Wilson, patient, too small. I mean, they're just looking at Javion McCollum. He is slight of build, and they're just saying, I got you. Ten to shoot for the Sooners. McCollum shot fake. Leaves it for Godwin. And with 2.9 to go on the shot clock, it'll stay Oklahoma ball. Here's this drive. They're just finding the matchup on McCollum and playing bully ball. I mean, just a size advantage. And he had no interest in passing that out. A little deception right up over the top of the smaller J.B. McCollum. Less than three to shoot. Moore got it and got it up, but no good. And Porter Moser can't believe it, but it's Houston basketball. He wanted a foul, so did everybody else in the building. Yeah, there's a lot of contact in there. Five minutes to go. Houston is 25 and 0 when they lead with five minutes left. And a traveling violation called on Damian Dunn. You know, Jamal Shedd, it, he's got something on his leg over there on the bench, which means he may be done. Because, you know, obviously Kelvin will bring him back in this moment. They need Jamal Shedd to calm them down. They need his presence. And with him not out there, their floor leader, they're a little bit discombobulated. The lead is seven for the number one Cougars. Darthur, another three. That's his fifth tonight. Sharp, the silencer. Big time. Houston's been in this 2-3 zone, and that's where you've come up with open shooters. Darthard's been open in that corner. Back to the man. Now four minutes to go. McCullough. And he'll go to the line and shoot two. 80 to 74, the top ranked Cougs in a tough test on the road against the Sooners. Come on back. For Technical adjustments from Javian. 94% from the free throw line. On track to be the best season as a free throw shooter in Oklahoma history. Beating Hollis Price of all people. Tomorrow, it's a women's basketball triple header. It starts with number one, South Carolina, going on against Tennessee. Then it's number 17, Notre Dame, and number 22, Louisville, followed by Duke and North Carolina. 
two free throws. McCollum has 10. The Houston lead is four. And Jawan Roberts has his second bucket of the second half. Roberts set a screen, and Jalen Moore fell down to the ground, and that's how Roberts ended up wide open. Playing with one hand, he gets an easy one. Stitches late in the first half in his right hand, but he's still out there balling. Seven to shoot. Darther, short on the two. Moore has himself a double-double. Another heavyweight fight in the Big 12. Here's the hobble, Jamal Shedd. Ten to shoot. Tried for the blow by. Got it up, no whistle. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. Here's McCollum with the blow by. Erased by Wilson. Wow. What a defensive play. Oh, the throw to nobody. I mean, it, it, that is something that I, clearly they've done before. They were not on the same page. Heck of a basket saving block there. Meeting him at the backboard, it gets beat, and then meets him at the backboard and clears it. And what a big turnover on the other end by Jamal Shedd and LJ Cryer not being on the same page. Uncharacteristic, to say the least. And the door is still open for Oklahoma, counting down to two minutes. Here's more, double teamed in the corner. Nearly threw it away. Godwin got it back and lays it in with the left hand. Here's Sharp. For three! Oh. He hit a shot just like that against Baylor in that overtime game. Just a sophomore. Doesn't turn 20 until next week. Whew. An answer from Yuzan. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy this one. One minute left. One possession ball game. Five to shoot. Sharp slipped. He's going to have to jack it up. Oh. In and out. There's a four-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And Porter Moser calls a timeout to talk it over. It's a bit of a desperation since 2002, the same year Kelvin Sampson, now the Houston coach, took the Sooners to the Final Four. Final 30 seconds. Here's Godwin. Ooh. And the foul on Sharp. Love it. Love it. They tried to get McCollum coming off, but you end up with a two-man game between Yuzan and Godwin. Two defenders stay with Yuzan, Godwin wide open. The rotation comes late, and you force Godwin to have to make two free throws. Sam Godwin, the 6'10 senior from nearby Ada, Oklahoma. Transfer from Wofford, a former walk-on, has 16 points tonight. One off his career high.
and he's four for four from the free throw line. And he's got another one. Again, Oklahoma out of timeouts. Houston has two timeouts remaining. If you're Oklahoma, you're going to pick up. And you're going to pressure, make or miss. Try to induce an early steal, and then you got to lay on the foul. Godwin missed it. Two-point game. Saved oh. by Yuzan. How about that for a huge turn of events? Is that Jalen Moore? He's been maniacal on the offensive glass. What a play. So now with 15.1 to go, Oklahoma has the ball in the front court. Down by two. They've made 12 threes tonight. McCollum found a seam. Got it! Tie game! Ed hobbles. Roberts injured. Javier Francis fouled out. Shed and inbounding the ball. Houston has 11.8 seconds to get the ball down court and score it to walk away with a win. Here's Shed. Off the window. No. Roberts tried to get it. Shed for the win. Got it. Jamal Shed plays the hero again. And it's come down to the final point four seconds. His number one Houston Cougars up by two. Jawan Roberts on the ball. You got size on the ball. Sooners need a prayer answer. Soros, no game over. The number one Houston Cougars survive an excellent ball game from both teams. But